Hi, this is Kevin Lyle. You're watching the Dark Side Chats. And this is an Imperial officer in his quarters getting ready for an interview on the Dark Side Chats. <laughs> Well, we're here this time with Kevin Lyle, art, Star Wars artist extraordinaire. <laughs> and uh, I would like to really ask you, thanks very much for taking the time to be on the show. And uh, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your background as a Star Wars artist. And uh, re really, um, what kind of comics, what kind of uh, paintings that, uh, if you could pan out here look at some of the paintings on the table, what kind of work that uh, uh, you've done for uh, the Star Wars universe? Well, uh, I started out as an artist, uh, I've been an artist all my life, probably since 1977, I started drawing stuff from Star Wars way back when I was a kid, and then uh, I got into art professionally uh, uh, about 10 years ago. I'm an art director and a graphic designer by trade, and I got into illustration about five or six years ago, and I've been working with uh, Lucasfilm and Topps for about a year and a half now. That's great. So you do work for Lucasfilm? I, I well, I work for Topps too. I work through Lucasfilm through Topps. I do, okay, I do illustrations for uh, for their series, and I also do their, uh, their sketch cards. That's great. What kind of comic books have you done? Uh, the only comic book I've ever worked on is actually the one I'm doing with uh, with Anthony Forrest. Uh, with Anthony Forrest. Okay. So, which is called Star Wars Fixer from the Shadow of the Twin Suns. It's uh, an idea that him and I came up with about a year ago. We've been working on it uh, diligently for the past eight months or so, and we're hoping that Dark Horse is going gonna, is gonna to pick it up. It's not a, a signed project at all or anything like that, but we're, we're pitching it to Dark Horse. Their schedule is pretty busy, and we're hoping it's going to come out about a year or so. I remember at Comic-Con when uh, the cover art there on the table uh, was revealed uh, for you know that comic book. And, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> The story behind that is, uh, is uh, I gave a disc to one of the tech guys at, at Comic Con in New York last year, or early this year, I should say, and uh, I had all the artwork we had for the characters, like uh, the character you see here, which is called Nekta Echi, which is our main villain in the, uh, uh, in the comic, and I had some other artwork uh, for the series, and I also had a faux cover that we that we had made up to be part of our presentation. And when uh, when it came up on the screen at uh, Comic Con, I looked at Anthony and I, and I just mouthed the words "lawsuit." <laughs> oh right. Because I thought we might have been in trouble with that, and uh, I just. This is no, no troubles with this comes from it, but it was it was a small mistake, and, and ultimately I guess it was mine because I gave it to the tech guy. I had no idea that that image was on the desk. Oh, okay, all right. Well, hopefully Dark Horse will pick it up, and if not Dark Horse, maybe uh, you know an, another publisher like Marvel, perhaps. But um, definitely. Uh, Why well, I, I doubt all, all comic books for, for Lucasfilm are done through Dark Horse. Okay. And, and otherwise, uh, the other way we're thinking about is maybe possibly an online uh, comic at StarWars.com, which uh, which is actually a very good possibility because they have a line of, uh, of uh, comics on that website. Great. Fabulous. Well, do you have a website of your own that uh, people can, can look at and see some of your work? Uh, yes, at KevinLyle.com. KevinLyle.com. It's uh, K-E-V-I-N-L-I-E-L-L.com. Great. Well, lastly, uh, one thing I do ask uh, everyone on the show, and I'm assuming you haven't met George Lucas in person. Actually, I've, I've met have. George a couple times. Okay, great. I met him uh, on the set of Indiana Jones. Uh, they filmed it actually about an hour from my house in New Haven, Connecticut. So uh, I met him on the set of, uh, there, and then I met him at a, uh, a conference actually about a month ago in New York City. Okay. Well, despite all of the conversations you've had with the notorious GL, as they say on the Forcecast, another podcast, by the way, which I listen to quite regularly, <laughs> um, if you could say or ask, uh, tell or ask George Lucas one thing that you haven't already, what would that be? Make 789. Make 789. Spoken like a true Star Wars fan and artist. <laughs> well, Kevin, thank you very much for taking the time and being on the Dark Side Chats. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming by and saying hello. May the Force be with you. The question to answer for this episode is, are you a reader of Star Wars comics? And if so, do you have a favorite scene or moment? Describe it for us in the comments section. And now, once again, also, here is another recurring guest on the show, one that also lives here on the East Coast, a place that Lord Bruticus rarely ever gets out to, uh, is Delpa Gaval, only this time his Admiral Tarjita. A, uh, an Imperial Admiral, I believe, are you not? That's correct. Okay, an Imperial Admiral. So, um, why would you commission yourself as an Admiral and not a Captain or uh, what other rank have you? Okay, Lord Bruticus, so I've always been fond of the, uh, the officers in Star Wars, Admiral Mahdi, Admiral Piet. So I figured, out oh, if I'm going to be uh, an Imperial Officer, why not be an Admiral? Ah, go all the way straight That's to the right, top. straight to the top. Very good. Okay, and so uh, you, you, and why an imperial officer and not, uh, say, uh, an imperial technician or, um, uh, you know, one of these other imperial uh, lowlifes? you want to, you got to be straight to the top then. Well, there's lots of good costumes, but um, the, the officer costume is a, you know, a nice costume to have, uh, and it helps me get to the 501st, which I'm part of the uh, Empire City Garrison. 
Uh-huh. And I'm, as you know, I'm also a member of the Rebel Legion. Okay. I have two, so I have three costumes now. I have my uh, Rebel Pilot, the Jedi, which of course you know about, and now... Right. Admiral Tar Jedi for the Bible First Legion. We have seen him as a Jedi slime ball, a rebel pilot, and of course, you know, Jedi slime ball, double give all. But uh, now he is an Imperial officer, Admiral Tar Jedi. Now, could you maybe, um, you mentioned you're a member of the Empire City Garrison. Now, the 501st yes. has different garrisons, and what are garrisons, really? Garrisons are chapters of the 501st Legion. Ah. Uh, basically, there's a Connecticut Garrison, New England Garrison. It's a world, worldwide uh, an international costuming club. For me, it would be the Southern California Garrison. That's correct. Right. And, of course, anybody in Southern California that would like to be on the show, if you're in the Southern California Garrison or uh, whatever, if you're a fan of Star Wars, hit me up at DarthBoruticus at AIM.com. But back to you, of course. Um, could you maybe describe some of your accoutrements? You've got a, a hat here with a, a little pin on it. And for those of us that aren't versed in uh, the imperial ways, I'm yes. more of a Sith Empire fan myself. Uh, Palpatine's Empire, what, what, what does that mean? Really? It's, a, it's an, an imperial, sign, imperial symbol that's on the hat and on the belt. I also have uh, ranking bars that represent the uh, commander, captain, this... I think okay. this is a, uh, an admiral's that's rank. your rank insignia. That's and uh, oh, what are these? In case you uh, don't have something to uh, write with, you can just reach in your pocket and. and uh... Well, these are code cylinders that are used in the, on the bridge of the Star Destroyer. Code cylinders. Mission. Okay, got kind it. Kind of like a memory stick. Kind of like a memory stick. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, they have flash drives in Star Wars after all, and they thought of that back in the 1970s. <laughs> can you imagine that? We've come a long way, haven't we? Well, I know I've asked you this once before, but I'm going to ask you again. Maybe you'll have a different answer. Okay. If you could ask or tell George Lucas one thing, what would that be? So many things I'd like to ask uh, George Lucas, of course. But um, two things I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, number one, why Jar Jar? And thank you, uh, George Lucas, for the past 30 years. Great. Well, thank you, Patrick, Patrick Delieto, ladies and gentlemen, for being a guest once again for the third or fourth time on the Dark Side Chats. It's Signing off from Megafest? Uh, from Super Megafest, a convention where I've had more interviews than even Comic-Con. Stay tuned to the next two episodes of the Dark Side Chats for more interviews from Super Megafest 2009. Until next time, may the Dark Side be with you always. Give yourself to the dark side. <laughs>